We're now at Lesson 6.4a, and this is Modeling and Solving Two-Step Equations. These two-step equations require two inverse operation steps to solve for the value of the variable. To find the value of the variable, we need to isolate the variable to one side of the equal sign, one side of the equation. We can solve two-step equations by using algebra tiles. We've used these before in some of the previous lessons. We have a rectangular x. That's a positive variable. Here we have a rectangular minus x. That's a negative variable. We have a little plus 1 square for adding 1 and a minus square for subtracting 1. We use algebra tiles to model the equation. So here's the parts of a two-step equation. We have a number just to the left of the variable, that's our coefficient, you should know that by now. We have our letter of the alphabet that's taking the place of an unknown amount, that's our variable. And this number here is called the constant, it's a value that does not change. And this is the sum of 4n plus 2 on the right side of the equal sign. Here it's telling us to use algebra tiles to model and solve 2x plus 4 is equal to 10. First thing we do is model the equation. We have 2x plus 4 is equal to a positive 10. So we have 10 positive square tiles on the right-hand side. And we know this line is going to represent equal. We remove or subtract an equal number of plus 1 tiles. These are the plus 1 tiles from both sides of the mat to help us isolate the variable. So if we have four of the plus squares here, we're going to take them away. One, two, three, four. Then we're going to take away four from this side. One, two, three, four. That's going to leave 2x is equal to 6. Now we do the fourth step. We match an equal amount of these plus tiles to each of these x variable tiles. If we put one here and one here, we have x is 3 and x is 3. We know each x is equal to 3. Let's try another one. We model the equation. We have 3x minus 2 is equal to 4. And since we're subtracting 2, we use 2 minus square tiles. To isolate the variable to one side of the mat, we add 2 of the plus tiles to each side. So we're going to put 1, 2, and then we're going to put 1, 2. Sorry, they're overlapping here. This will create zero pairs on the left side as minus 2 plus 2 is equal to 0. If we take these pairs away, we're going to be left with 3x is equal to 6. And by dividing the remaining tiles into equal groups, we see that each x tile is equal to 2. We have x is equal to 2. We can check our work, see if we did it correctly. We substitute 2 for x in the equation to see if 2 will make the equation true. We had 3x minus 2 is equal to 4. Instead of x, we put a 2 here, so we have 3 times 2 minus 2 is equal to 4. Well, 3 times 2 is 6, so we have 6 minus 2. Well, that's a 4, and 4 is equal to 4, so yes, we did it correctly. We know it is true that x is equal to 2 in this equation. So we've been using the word isolate. Well, it's a verb. It means to set apart, separate from others, keep it alone. So we want to isolate the variable. When we isolate the variable to one side of the equation, we separate it from all other parts of the equation. This isolation will show it's, its value as a number or even as terms of an equation. So here we have 2x plus 6 is equal to 16. 
we have a plus 6, so we're going to use the inverse operation with a minus 6, and this is going to create our zero pair and eliminate it. And on this side, 16 minus 6 is a 10. Now we have 2x is equal to 10. We divide both sides by this coefficient, 2, and 2 over 2 as a fraction is a 1, so we have 1x, but we don't have to write the 1. And on this side, we have 10 divided by 2, which is a 5. Now, we have x is equal to 5. Now, when you get into 8th grade, you're going to learn about equations that have a variable on both sides of the equation. So here we have a variable x on the left side, and we have a variable y on the right side. We can actually do inverse operations, and if we have a minus 24, we can do a plus 24 which is going to eliminate this, but then we have to do a plus 24 on this side. And because they're unlike terms and we can't combine them, we're going to end up with a 4y plus 24. We still are going to divide both sides by this coefficient 2 to isolate this variable. We get a 2 over 2, which is a 1x, and when we divide this side by 2, we get 4y divided by 2 is a 2y, and 24 divided by 2 is a 12, we actually get that x is equal to 2y plus 12. We're going to get into that in eighth grade. So sometimes we don't know the true value of the variable. Sometimes it just gives us some terms. Here we have negative 5x plus 3 is equal to 2. We model the equation using the appropriate tiles. We have negative 5x plus 3 is equal to negative 2. Now since we have plus 3 on the variable side of the mat, we'll add negative 3 to each side of the mat. So we're going to do this. Let me move these up. We're going to have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and then we're going to add negative 3 to this side. 1, 2, 3. This will create zero pairs on the left that we can remove. We have a pair of a plus and a minus that we can remove. We have another pair of a plus and a minus that we can remove. And we have another pair of a plus and a minus that we can remove. We line up each negative variable tile with a negative square tile, and that'll represent doing division. We're making equal groups. We line up each one of these with an equal amount on the right side. Now, we see that a negative variable tile is equal to a negative square tile. Since a negative divided by a negative makes a positive quotient, well, we find out that x is equal to 1. We have a positive x equal to a positive 1. So it's really important that you understand when we have negative tiles on this side and negative tiles on this side, we have a negative divided by a negative that's going to give us a positive, okay? We can substitute 1 for x in the equation to see if 1 makes the equation true. We had a negative 5x plus 3 is equal to negative 2. We put a 1 substituted into the place for the x. Now we have negative 5 times a positive 1. Well, that's going to give us a negative 5. They have unlike signs, and it's going to be 5. We have a negative 5. If we add 3, then we're going to go back up towards 0 on that number line, aren't we? We're going to have a negative 2, and we get negative 2 is equal to negative 2. So yes, we know x is equal to a positive 1. We can only remove zero pairs from one side of an equation. There must be a pair of a negative and a positive for tiles that are removed together. If we have 2x minus 3 is equal to 5, that's how this is modeled. Since we have a minus 3 here, we can Put plus 3 on each side. Make sure you do it to each side of the equal sign so it stays balanced. Now we have a zero pair that we can remove. 
We have another zero pair we can remove and another one. And what we're left with is 2x is equal to 8. Well, that means each x must be 4. We know x is equal to 4. For algebraic equations that contain fractions or decimals as coefficients, constants, or solutions, we can't use algebra tiles. Algebra tiles represent integers, not rational numbers. So remember, an integer, that's a positive and negative whole number. A rational number, well, those are fractions and decimals. We're finished with 6.4a. We're going to move on to 6.4b, solving two-step equations. And we have done some of that so far, but when we're finished with this 6.4 lesson, you're really going to understand how to solve them. Like always, I hope you have a really nice day, and I hope you join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye.